for why I must be pile our books for thumbnails. So I have a giant book haul. Um, I have acquired some books over time since the last book haul I posted where I just would buy one book at a time randomly. Um, but I did get some extra cash semi-recently for book events that I was doing. So I was responsible and I did put most of it on bills and stuff, uh, but I did take a chunk of it um, to spend on books. So I have a lot here. They're in no order, like they're not in the order that I purchased them because I had already put them on my shelves and I just grabbed them and I might even be missing some out of here, but I've got at least most of the books that I've acquired since my last book haul. So in no particular order in purchase date. Uh, the first book here is The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. Yeah, Jesse Burton, which my stepmom actually got this for me just randomly because apparently there is a miniseries uh, based on this book and she was watching it with my dad and because it's based in Amsterdam it made her think of me because I went to Amsterdam last year and also my new book Tickets to Caresvale is based off Amsterdam so she checked to see if there was a book first, which there is, and she just ordered it from Indigo and had it sent to my address. When I was at Value Village looking for pieces for my Halloween costume, I found a copy of Valiant by Holly Black, which is the sequel to <sighs> Tithe? Teeth? Tithy? I don't know how to say it, but that book by Holly Black. And when I read the first book in high school, and it's about fairies, and I really enjoyed it, and I wanted to read the sequel, but then when I found out that the sequel was about different people, I was like, that's stupid and didn't want to read it. But I have since grown. <laughs> and have read series that follow different characters and they're good. So I saw this and it's also the exact same cover and same size as the first book that I have which I don't think this version of these books are still in print so that's pretty exciting that they completely match. And then so all I need is the third one that I will hopefully find in the same size. The only thing is um, I don't remember enough from the first one to read this without rereading the first one so I'm gonna have to reread the first one. I got An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green, which is his uh, debut novel. It just came out and I love Hank Green. Definitely was interested in this and I've heard nothing but good things about it. I've heard it's really weird and really really good and it's about a girl who comes across this random statue that didn't used to be there and randomly is there now and she films it with her friend and puts it on YouTube and the video goes viral and it's about her dealing with becoming like internet famous I think and also about these statues that are just randomly popping up everywhere randomly all over the world. I also got The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay which the synopsis on Goodreads is actually a little bit different than the synopsis in the inside flap of this book and the synopsis on Goodreads is a lot more punchy and a lot more intriguing than the one inside the book. Uh, there's just a little bit more detail on the one inside the book that just makes it seem, I don't know, less grabbing or whatever. But it's about a girl who lives in a cabin that has like no neighbors for miles with her two dads. And then these people show up and the girl wants to run into the house to warn her parents and they say that you have to let your parents let us in because we need your help to save the world. And uh, that's it. I've also heard it's really spooky. I'm very, very intrigued by this one. The next book I have here is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang, which my boyfriend got for me uh, just randomly one day, which I thought was adorable. It is about someone with Asperger's, I believe, and she really likes math, but she doesn't have any relationship experience, and she ends up hiring like a prostitute basically I guess, or an escort or whatever you want to call it, so that she can learn how to do sex. <laughs> but I think she ends up falling in love with the prostitute guy. So anyway, apparently it's really fun and also pretty sexy. On that same day, Anthony also got me Sleeping Giants by Sylvan Nouvel, which I have already read and I really enjoyed it. Um, if you like, I will link the reading vlog in the description and I'll put it up in the corner for you too when I read this book. I think the reactions that I have while reading it are pretty funny and uh, there are no spoilers so you don't have to worry about that, but it is about a woman who when she was a little girl she fell into this hole in the ground that had this giant giant metal hand in it and she just like landed in the palm of the hand and 
20 years later she is a scientist and she's actually working on a research team to find out what this hand is and where it comes from and what it's a part of and it's told in mostly interview format and it was really good. I really enjoyed it and I would like to read the second one. Alright, the next book here is The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, uh, which I've heard a lot of good things about. Uh, for some reason when it first came out I was kind of meh about it, but since hearing so many good things about it and lots of people talk about how fun it is, I want to read it now. I just decided to wait till it came out in paperback. Also, because I'm not the biggest fan of this cover to be honest, a lot of people really like it, but I don't like it very much, uh, so I would rather have it in paperback. <laughs> so I have it! and now I can read it and hopefully it will be fun. I got Lee on the Offbeat by Becky Albertalli, which is a direct sequel to Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, except this follows Leah. I purchased A Big Water by Andrea Curtis. I have also already read this book and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty well done and it was really short, a uh, quick easy read, and it's based on... it's basically a fictitious story based on true events. It's about a ship sinking in the late 1800s in Georgian Bay during a violent storm and only two teenagers survived and so that actually happened. The rest of it is fiction so nobody actually really knows all of the events that happened from the boat sinking and what happened to the two teenagers before they were um, rescued and all that kind of stuff. It's all the authors just made up the story surrounding the characters and she changed their names to, I believe, to make it, you know, not a true story. <laughs> so I guess you would say it's in inspired by true events, but it's not based on a true story. So I was really interested in this. First I picked it up because of the cover. I thought the cover was absolutely gorgeous. And then I wanted to read it because it took place on Georgian Bay. And uh, my town is on Georgian Bay, so take that. I got George by Alex Gina, which I also have already read and absolutely adored. It is about a girl that everyone sees as a boy because she was born assigned male and it's about her kind of discovering what it means and hoping for acceptance and it's really good and it made me cry and it was really sweet. I also got My Lady Jane by Cynth oh, three authors, wow, Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. I heard a lot of people saying how hilarious this book was, and I don't know why, but I didn't believe them. <laughs> I was like, eh, I think it's gonna be lame. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know. And I read the first page at my friend's bookstore, and it was hilarious. I know, just like everyone said. So I got it. Most of these books I got from my friend's bookstore, I tried to get my books from her bookstore because I like to support her. Why would I buy books from other bookstores when I have a friend who owns one? <laughs> so there are some here that I did get not from her bookstore but um, only some. Most of them are from hers and that's where I try to get them from most of the time um, in case you cared. <laughs> also got The Map of Salt and Stars by Jennifer Zainat. Oh I'm sorry I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. I'm not gonna I'm gonna butcher it but um, by this person right there, uh, which is actually follows two stories, uh, someone from back in the day and someone from present time, and their stories kind of like mirror each other or intertwine or something. I also got a signed version of the new cover of Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This is my second favorite book of all time. I would like to reread it before I read Vengeful, uh, which I do not have yet, even though it's already out, but... I have so many books, I can't buy them all, and all these books I bought before Vengeful came out, and I have no money left to buy more books, so... <laughs> anyway, Vicious is about, if you didn't know, two people who discover that you can get um, superhuman abilities if you have a near-death experience, and it follows them uh, in college when they're discovering this and 10 years later after they've already discovered it and are now mortal enemies. I also got Pillow Thoughts by Courtney Peppernell. I got this from Chapters because uh, this version of the book was a Chapters exclusive and this was the version that I wanted. Um, I took the Chapters exclusive or Indigo exclusive whatever sticker off and it left a sticky residue and now I'm sad. But I've read some of the little poems and thoughts in it so far and I've tabbed the ones that I really liked and I just haven't picked it up since going through it the first couple times, but I did really like a lot of the ones that I've read in here so far. I got Alex Approximately by Jen Bennett, which is kind of like a teen you've got male story, 
which I'm really excited about. And I've wanted to read this for a while, I just didn't want it in hardcover. Uh, it just, just seemed like the kind of cover that I would like better in paperback, which I do, so I'm happy that I have it in paperback. I also got Ship It by Britta London, Yep. Um, which I saw on uh, Jackson Bird's channel first, actually, which is funny because he doesn't do book video, except he does do book videos sometimes, and every single time he does one, he jokes about being a booktuber, and I'm always like, you should make a booktube channel! <laughs> anyway, he was sent this book for review, and uh, I think he liked it for the most part. He didn't give it a rating or anything, but he did have a lot of good things to say about it, and I think it's great. I love stories that have famous people and non-famous people together and that's a big aspect of the story. They're not falling in love in it or anything like that but I still think it's so much fun when there's famous people and regular people who are interacting together that's more than just a hi I'm getting your autograph interaction. And also can we look at this hardback. Oh my goodness. <laughs> This is amazing. I was like, I need this book in hardcover because the naked hardback is gorgeous. It's about someone who asks a question at a panel at like a comic con or something about her favorite TV show about one of the guys on it um, being gay or something and he says something, his response is that he's not gay but he says it in kind of a rude way I guess. And so the PR team of the show thinks it would be a good idea to invite her along on their next tour of some kind or something. Anyway, sounds like fun. I got Meg by Steve Alton, uh, which I have also already read, and it was amazing. Like, it was bad, but it was amazing. <laughs> I don't know how to describe how it's terrible yet fabulous at the same time. And like, it is like fabulous because it's terrible, but it's also fabulous despite being terrible. It's just, it's weird. It was bad, but it was so good. Like, it was so good, and I was very enthusiastic about wanting everyone to read this book, and I don't think anyone that I've talked about it is going to read it, but um, it was so much fun. <laughs> it's about a giant shark dinosaur that eats people. I got We Are Okay by Nina LaCour, which I absolutely love this cover. I think it is so gorgeous. Oh my gosh. And I haven't read it yet, but I think I'm going to save it for December because it takes place over Christmas break, I think. And it's about a girl who is a, who's alone at school during Christmas break, but then she goes to see her girlfriend or her friend or... I don't know. I also got To Your Eternity by that person, which is a manga. I've also read this and I thought it was really cool and very cute and I enjoyed it and I would like to read. The next one, my mom got this for me. And my sister got this one for me, Heart of Iron by Ashley Poston, um, which I think is also great because the other book here is Geekerella by Ashley Poston, and these are two completely different genres. This one is sci-fi with a robot in space. I think it's in space. And this one is a Cinderella retelling about a famous person and a non-famous person falling in love, thank you very much. <laughs> so that just makes me super happy and the thing that because um, all of my books are all different genres and I feel like more authors should do that. Holly Black, I don't say that all of her books are different genres but she does have some books that are quite different from other books um, which I have always thought is really cool and as soon as I realized that these were the same authors I was like what that's amazing and I told my boyfriend and I was like these two books are the same author and he was like she's just like you I was like I know I also got Emmy and Oliver by Robin Benway I've read another book by Robin Benway it was Audrey Waite which I really enjoyed and I saw this I thought the cover was kind of cute I recognized the author's name so I read the back and I was like yep gonna get that and now I don't remember don't even remember what it's about me and Oliver used to be best friends until Oliver just disappeared um, and uh, now it's their, their teenagers, and Oliver has found out that he's actually has been kidnapped his whole life, that his father kidnapped him and took him away from his mother, and he didn't know that, and he finds that out when he goes back to his hometown and sees Emmy or whatever, so that sounds like it's gonna be emotional and also cute. <laughs> Which sounds bad to say cute, but like the relationship I'm sure will, might, will probably be cute, but I feel like there's gonna be some emotion in this. I also got Little Moments of Love, a collection of Katana comics, which I love these on Facebook. I've seen them, I don't know if you've seen them on Facebook, but I see them on my feed all the time and I think I'm following them now, but 
Um, I saw them on my feet a lot before I even started following them and they're so cute. They're just little tiny cute little comics about their relationship that a lot of people can relate to. And they're so adorable and I love them so much and you can read this in like 10 minutes and you can read it over and over because they're so cute. Okay, last book. <laughs> I got Me Talk Pretty One Day by David Sedaris, which I have no idea what this is about because there's no synopsis anywhere on this book at all whatsoever. <laughs> but it was at our my store, we sell used books to raise money for charity. So it was $2 and I was like, I've heard about this book and it's $2 and it's in good condition so I'm gonna get it. So I can't tell you what it's about because I'm too lazy to look it up, uh, but I got it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure those are all the books. Oh good, Hi. you're in my room. Yeah, because there's nowhere else to film. Cheater. <laughs> I need a mask and a sanding thing. Oh. Hi. Hello and welcome to my end screen. If you like the sound of my next book being based off Amsterdam, you can check it out right here. I have a Kickstarter going on for it that's only going until October 21st, 2018. And if I don't make my goal, I can't publish my book. So check it out and grab one of the really cool rewards. You can also click up here if you want to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet.